that's not big enough. No, that's not big enough either. That's more like it. We're delighted to have you with us, and we extend a cordial welcome to you. We've lined up the top stars from Hollywood and from all over the world to entertain you on our giant screen with the new colorful motion pictures you've been hearing about and reading about. To add to your enjoyment, we're all wound up to bowl you over at intermission time with live wire service at our snack bar, where you'll find a tempting variety of favorite foods and beverages. Now it's showtime, folks. And you can be sure it's the best show in town. Your continued patronage is very, very welcome. Good evening. Welcome back for another week of terror. This time we have two classics of Italian Gothic horror cinema. The Horrible Dr. Hitchcock and Mill of the Stone Women. Our first film, The Horrible Dr. Hitchcock, was the third horror movie for Ricardo Frida, having previously directed E. Vampiri and Caltigi the Immortal Monster. Hey, we just watched those last month. This was reportedly shot over a short 14-day period, something which, uh, well, at least to me, isn't particularly apparent when watching this gorgeous production. Uh, speaking of gorgeous, Barbara Steele actually took 10 days off from shooting Fellini's Eight and a Half to do this one. Because that's kind of a testimony to how much she liked the horror genre or Ricardo Frida or some combination of both. Who the heck knows? Last bit of trivia I have regarding this movie is that the mansion used for shooting is actually the home of the Bulgarian embassy in Italy. Uh, a bit of warning, folks. This film does deal with necrophilia. I mean, it's not like necromantic or anything, so don't get me wrong with that. But if that concept is a little too much for you, it might be wise to just leave and come back in 80 minutes or so. Let's start now.
You won't feel anything. It'll be just as if you were asleep. Prepare the injection, please. Hurry, we must operate before the heart beats quicken up again. I don't know how long my anaesthetic will last. Very variable. Scalpel. I must hurry. My wife has guests and she'll never forgive me for being late. Professor. Yes? Excuse me. There's Inspector Scott who wants to talk to you. Yes, of course. Ah, good evening, Inspector. Good evening. Do you think he'll be all right? Well, he's had a very severe blow, but I've done everything possible for him. All we can do now is hope for the best. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Inspector. The Professor's done everything he can. So, don't worry. Your father will be all right. Good evening, Professor. Good evening. Oh, Martha. Yes, sir. Uh, please tell my wife I'm very tired this evening, and so I'm going straight up to my room. Everything's ready upstairs, sir. Thank you, Martha. I feel very tired. Please, Please forgive us, my dear. Thank you for a lovely evening. Good night. Good night. Good night, Margaret. Good night, Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you. Good Come again soon.
Yes. Thank you, Doctor. No, no, no. It's it is miracle. only science your father must thank. It's a great victory, Professor. It may not be a miracle, but it has all the characteristics of one. The human body keeps its secrets well hidden. So much time has been wasted in attempts to analyze the soul, while the mechanical, material side of our beings remains an unknown universe. If you hadn't been able to get that slowing up of the heartbeat, the operation could never have been such an overwhelming success. Well, I don't know. Perhaps my anesthetic is only useful because it slows up the general action of the organism. Professor, the patient is ready for the operation. All right. Margaret! Margaret! Ma Margaret! Doesn't it seem strange for the doctor to bury his wife in his laboratory? Yes, but you must admit the good doctor's a little strange himself, isn't he?
The carriage is waiting. Thank you, Martha. Have you decided to leave then? Yes, Martha, I have. I can't go on living here. Everything reminds me of her. Everything. I shall leave the house in your charge. All right. Goodbye, Martha. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, where's the cat? Jezebel disappeared. Well, goodbye. anywhere as long as I'm with you. I think we're almost there. Bring up the rest of the bags. In the morning. Yeah. Thank you, sir. A laboratory right here on the grounds. Uh, Nature is very prolific. It's only taken a few years to turn this place into a wilderness. Oh, look. There's someone up there. Who can it be? It must be Martha, my housekeeper. It's going to rain. Yes, come along. We must hurry. Cynthia, I'll strike a match. Professor. Martha, this is my wife. Cynthia, this is my housekeeper, Martha. How do you do? You must excuse the state the house is in, but I only had time to prepare the upstairs rooms. Ah. Would you like something to eat? Ah, yes. You must be hungry, my dear. Uh, no. I'm just tired. In that case, Professor, shall I show your wife up to her room if she... 
What was that? <coughs> Nothing. It's my sister. I've had her staying with me here. But tomorrow I'm taking her to an asylum. She's quite mad. Come on, dear. I'll go upstairs with you. Why does Martha look at me in such a strange way? Oh, Martha may appear a little odd, but you'll soon get used to her. Come along. When we get some proper light, it'll be much more cheerful. It's beautiful. Was it here that she used to sleep? Yes. Forgive me, but this house has such a strange effect on me. It's so hostile. I I'm scared by all kinds of things, even the cat. You're just very tired. You'll feel quite differently tomorrow. Of course. Now, Martha will bring up your bag, and if you need anything, there's a bell behind your bed. Thank you. Good night, my love. Good night. Is that you?
Good morning, my dear. Good morning. Now sit down. How do you feel? I didn't sleep well. How is that? You didn't uh, hear anything last night, did you? No. Why? After you left me, I'm sure somebody tried to get into my room. But that's absurd, my dear. Who could possibly do that? I don't know, but I saw the door handle turn and heard footsteps. Oh, come now, Cynthia. You were very tired last night. Perhaps you just imagined it. There was someone at the door, I assure you. Oh, rubbish, Cynthia. My room is next to yours, and I heard nothing at all. I'm sorry, my dear, but uh, going back to the hospital, after all these years, has put my nerves on edge. Forgive me. Yes? There's an orderly here from the hospital. He wishes to speak to you and says it's urgent. Excuse me, my dear. to a concert tonight. Be ready about eight. All right. up there. Why is this door locked? It's always been locked. Magnificent performance. Really. What did you Don't think? you think it was really good yes, all-round performance? Yes, as round as a soprano's figure. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, there's an emergency at the hospital. Thank you. Would you excuse me, my dear? I'm afraid I have to go to the hospital at once. Would you see my wife home and then join me at the hospital? With pleasure. Good night. Good night. Shall we? come over from New York when the professor returned home. And I was lucky enough to find a position here. I've always followed his experiments with great interest. Oh, really? Don't think that because I married Bernard, I know about medicine. I wouldn't know, but since you married the professor, you are interested, it seems. You are, aren't you? Why, of course. Find it too boring? No, of course not. May I accompany you to the door? No, thank you. My husband will be waiting for you at the hospital. I hope. 
to have the pleasure of seeing you again. I will expect you to call on me. Good night. Good night. someone and wondered who it was. Would you please show me to the house? Come. Please take the cat with you. All right. And Martha, will you please leave your sister locked in the lodge? My sister? She was taken to a clinic in Bath yesterday. He's getting old. It shouldn't have happened. The poor woman. What if you'd used your anesthetic? Perhaps you could have saved her. No. I shall never use that anesthetic again. It isn't perfected yet. It's too risky.
Professor? No. But I can't be mistaken. She had those boots on. I'm absolutely certain those were the ones, even though I only saw her for a moment, standing in front of my door. All this is utterly ridiculous. Cynthia, you must remember that when I first met you, you had not been well. The shock of your father's death had left you in a highly nervous condition. You seem to be getting over it, but you must not allow your imagination to run away with you. I know it sounds absurd, but I really saw it, Bernard. I actually saw it. I waited all night for you to come in, but I didn't hear you at all. I got back extremely late. Bernard, all these portraits of her, even here in your room. Oh, I know you adored her. But please try to understand. Wherever I go, her eyes seem to be watching, watching me. All right, Cynthia. I must go. And Cynthia, please remember that when I'm not in the house, I do not wish you to enter this room. I'll see you at dinner. Good morning. How nice to see you. I came to talk to your husband. Bernard's gone out. Is it urgent? Oh, urgent? Not very. Please come in. How do you like London? What's the matter? Do you believe in ghosts? No, I don't. Neither do I. But ever since I've been in this house, it's been a constant fear to me. I'm beginning to believe in them. I even saw the folds of a dress and a slipper. Are you sure? It's not possible. You could have imagined it. I knew you wouldn't believe me. But I'm telling you the truth. In your opinion, is Bernard normal? as much as any man of genius. But why? Oh, nothing. Just an idea. Can't I offer you a drink? No, thank you. I've got to go to the clinic. Oh. Anyway, Cynthia, if I can ever help you, please don't hesitate to, to let me know. Thank you, Kurt. Goodbye.
Hitchcock. What do you want, Dr. Lang? Nothing. It's my turn on duty tonight. I heard a noise, but I didn't think it was you. I, uh, I just wanted to check the state of coagulation in this case. But if you'd just called me, I would have helped you. I didn't know you were on duty tonight. Anyway, it's useless. Come, let's get out of here.
I thought you asked me to look in and say good night. Where have you been? Martha didn't tell the truth about her sister's leaving. She's still here. Have you seen her? Yes, I was up at the lodge and saw her through the window. Her back was turned to me. That's strange. And another thing, Bernard. What's through that door? Which door? The first one there, on the landing. It's my old laboratory, and I wish it to remain locked. Bernard, you've changed so much since we got here. Why can't we leave this house now? I left this house once, and I bitterly regret having done so. I shall not leave it again. Good night.
the same treatment. Someone scratch you, Professor. Uh, <laughs> it was Jezebel, my cat. Professor. Yes, Frank? Your carriage is at the door, Professor. Ah, yes, my wife is waiting at home. Frank, do me a favor. Go back downstairs and tell them I'll be there as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Something wrong, Professor? You have no doubt already understood the situation. It's my wife. Your wife? Yes. When I first met her, she'd been undergoing treatment for a shock she'd had. I fell in love with her straight away, and I, I tried to convince myself she was completely cured. She seemed quite balanced to me. A little impressionable, perhaps. She's got it into her head that I don't love her that I'm still in love with my first wife, Margaret. She even thinks that Margaret's ghost is haunting her. It's your fault, Professor. Huh? My fault? Yes. She feels as if she were a stranger in your house. And the fact that you wish everything to remain as it was makes her think that you still love your first wife. Cynthia feels like a rival. And in her subconscious is this question of doubt. But that's absurd. Perhaps I may be blamed for having brought Cynthia back here, but uh, this place is full of memories for me. And not all very pleasant ones, I assure you. But uh, one can't run away forever. To move house would be sufficient. Maybe. How are you feeling, my dear? What's the matter? What happened? What did you do to me? Nothing. We found you lying unconscious in the garden. You've been quite delirious. Look at the state you're in. But... But it's not possible. I'm afraid, my dear, that your nerves have given way again. However, don't worry. You will soon be well.
drink this. It'll make you sleep. Martha, don't disturb my wife. She's not well. Oh, and Martha, I think perhaps you'd better go away for a few days. You understand? You can resume your duties a little later on. As you wish, Professor. Oh, Martha, I shall never forget what you've done for my... for my poor wife. Professor? Yes? It's Frank. Ah. Frank! Where have you been? Where's the bag? There was no one there. No one in the house? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I rang, called, even walked right round the house. Saw no one at all. Excuse me, Professor. Maybe your wife has gone out on a visit. But she never goes out by herself. I must go and see if something is wrong. You understand, don't you? Please take over from me. The moment he wasn't looking, I poured the milk into a flower vase. Could be Cynthia that your husband... Surely you don't believe that he... I... I don't know. I don't know, Kurt. I've only got you who can help me. Don't you understand? I've only got you. Yes, Cynthia. And then last night I woke in a horrible place. And there was Bernard looking at me like some monster. Suddenly I saw these hands grabbing him around the neck. It terrified me, terrified me. Then I don't know what happened. I must have fainted. And then? Nothing. This morning I was in my own room and there was Bernard looking at me. I made him think I'd drunk the milk and then I pretended to be asleep. I'll have it analyzed, Cynthia. And if the results show nothing wrong, will you admit the absurdity of your suspicion? 
Anyhow, try to remain calm. Your imagination is much too vivid. Yes, I know. I know it seems real. Cynthia. I was worried about you. What on earth are you doing here? Your wife came looking for you, Professor. In your absence, I entertained her. I see. Well, I think perhaps we'd better go home. Come along, my dear. I sent her away. You mean you've dismissed her? Yes. I didn't think you'd mind. In fact, I thought you'd be pleased. concentration here to kill a horse. Are you sure? Hmm. Three different tests. The same result in each case. The milk you brought me contains sleeping tablets. Enough to give eternal sleep. But, oh, Cynthia. Oh, no. I might be too late.
alive down here. When I got out of my coffin, Bernard had gone. He didn't know. He still loved me. It's you. You who must die. <laughs> Just like it always used to be. I will give you back your beauty with this young blood. Yes, kill her, kill her, and then there will be only me. The past is burning, and that nightmare is over forever. The nightmare is over forever. Well, maybe that one, but you know, if I have any say in the matter, there's going to always be another nightmare just around the corner. Well, our next film, Mill of the Stone Women, has a storyline that's somewhat similar to other European horror films you might have seen, such as uh, The Awful Dr. Orloff or Eyes Without a Face. You know, mad scientist trying to save his daughter via mad science, that sort of thing. Don't get me wrong, though. This isn't a generic movie by any means. For me, 
It's one of the finest examples of Italian Gothic horror outside of some of the Baba stuff. Well, director Giorgio Ferroni was fairly prolific. He didn't do much in the horror genre outside of this and Night of the Devils, 1972. I suppose it's a testimony to his skill as a filmmaker that he was able to do horror as well as he did in this one, being his first entry into the genre and all. Well, all right, I'll shut up now. It's intermission time. Get a snack, use the bathroom. Pretty soon we're going to start Middle of the Stone Women. Refresh yourself. It's intermission time. The concession stand is open and ready to serve you. Well, you see what I get from the refreshment counter. Oh boy, popcorn and candy bars and ice cream and oh boy, sparkling ice cold Coca-Cola. Oh Boy, that tastes good. Have you been to the refreshment counter? Remember, your favorite snack will taste especially good with world-famous ice-cold Coca-Cola. It's time to stretch and fetch. See what's cooking at our refreshment counter. You'll find your favorite foods and beverages, plus many new goodies to tempt your appetite and add to your evening's pleasure. Everything's the finest quality. So treat yourself now. After the show, please replace the speaker on its stand. If you accidentally break the cord, please turn the speaker in at the refreshment stand or the manager's office. Thank you. And by the way, on your way home, drive... Where is everybody going? To the refreshment center. It's everybody's favorite spot for delicious, tasty food from a snack to a full meal. Drinks, coffee, hot chocolate, and ice cold drinks of all flavors, plus all the extras, including gum, ice cream, candy. Make your evening at this drive-in even more enjoyable. The refreshment stand has everything to make your visit here a pleasant one. Why not get something now? It's intermission time, folks. Time out for a delicious snack in our sparkling refreshment building. Every item a fresh, appetizing taste treat. Crispy, crunchy, hot buttered popcorn. Really good. Sizzling hot dogs, bursting with juicy goodness. Candy bars, a taste-tempting array. Tangy, tasty barbecues, served piping hot. Thirst-quenching, refreshing, ice-cold drinks. Refreshing, delicious, satisfying ice cream. Fresh-brewed hot coffee, as you like it. Stage. He's the natural. 
He's the rage, meet this person at a tea at our refreshment counter. Treat the family. How do you like your pizza? Gobbled? Nibbled? Two-fisted style. You like ours best anyway. A crisp, delicate crust topped with our own special nippy tomato sauce, seasoned just the way you like it, and lots of golden Italian cheese melted right in. Delicious, and on sale now at the refreshment center. Pizza, piping hot and tangy. How about some right now? Wouldn't some hot buttered popcorn hit the spot right now? Extra fluffy, extra big kernels of it pop to perfection. Then drenched with the golden goodness of pure sweet creamery butter. Can't you just taste it? We heat the container extra high, but <laughs> you better buy two more for the rest of the family. Piping hot golden buttered popcorn at the refreshment center right now. How do you make a picture of a perfect hamburger? Start with the finest grade of government inspected beef. Take it sizzling hot from the griddle and serve it up on an oven fresh bun. For the finishing touches, add mustard, ketchup, relish, or the works. Makes your mouth water, doesn't it? Yes, that picture perfect hamburger is waiting for you right now at your refreshment center. There's time to pick up enough for everyone. As you leave the theater, folks, please be careful. Don't let this happen to your car. Be sure to remove the speaker before you leave. If you should accidentally pull a speaker loose, please turn it in at our snack bar or box office. Thank you. Hot popcorn just popped. Try a terrific hot barbecue sandwich. It's intermission time, folks, and that means it's time for a tasty snack. How about a stroll over to the refreshment counter for a delicious bite to eat? You don't have to worry about missing any part of the show because our announcer will let you know three minutes before the show starts again. See you over at the refreshment counter. And now, here's our own special hot chocolate. Extra creamy, rich, and delicious because we whip every drop frothy smooth. Gives it something special in the flavor department. Creamy hot chocolate at the refreshment center. Pop's Old Fashioned Soda Shop. Remember how good Pop's candy and soft drinks were? His popcorn was the best in town. Some of your fondest memories are of refreshing treats from Pop Soda Shop. Well, there's no reason why you can't enjoy flavorful treats today, just like way back then. Visit our refreshments. It's refreshment time, and our refreshment stand is loaded with good things to eat. There's crispy, crunchy popcorn, and hot, delicious, buttered popcorn, lots of candy, and frosty, refreshing, cold drinks. Why not treat yourself at the refreshment center now? Nothing refreshes like frosty, delicious ice cream. At your refreshment stand, you'll find every kind and every flavor of frozen treats. Refreshing, good as they can be. Yes, tasty ice cream for everybody at the refreshment center. Pick some up now. Popcorn hungry, we have it. Kettle the popper. There are other treats for you too, such as fresh candies and ice cream. Visit the refreshment center now. Enjoy a delicious snack and ice cold Coca-Cola. Music to the ears of the hungry. The sizzle of a mouth-watering hamburger. 
fresh, lean beef, done to a golden brown, couched in a soft bun, and garnished to taste. Man, that's hunger heaven. And you'll feel like you're heaven sent when you get one at our refreshment stand. Now, it's showtime. Trouble began with a woman. Here in the country village of Beze, outside Amsterdam, Holland, you are about to meet a young man, a writer, who would deny that obvious truth. For he is naive, he respects, he loves women. He is about to change his mind. Excuse me, can you tell me where Professor Vaal lives? Oh, oh. Professor Vaal, the famous sculptor. I know he lives near here in a mill. Oh, now I know. Follow me. Is it far away? On the other side of the canal, at the mill of the stone women. What's that? That's what we call it. The windmill of the stone women. Is that it? No, it's further on. Beyond the cemetery of Vese. Van Arnhem. Hans Van Arnhem. What do you want here? I have an appointment here with Professor Val. Good. Come in. Wait here if you please. You ought to wait for him in his studio. Yes, but I... You will come this way. Through this door.
Mr. Rudolph. Not abruptly. Understand? Hans von Arnen? Yes, sir. Professor Gregarius Bauer. You will not expect it so soon. And I am not prepared. It was Professor Karan who sent me here. I am only his assistant. He told me you had been informed of my arrival. Mm, but then why must it be so very urgent? We are very close to the deadline Professor Karan agreed upon with the editor. The monograph about your carousel should come out in time for the centennial. Ah, yes. I had forgotten. It was 100 years ago now that my great-grandfather opened a carousel to the public, like it is. Well, when do you want to begin? Tomorrow, if I may. Professor Koran has given me just 10 days. Ah, no. Now you're here, let's start at once. I don't have much time I can spare you. will have to work quickly. Well, if you'll follow me, please. Rudolph, adjust the brake. It's dangerous the way it is. Yes, sir, Professor. I'm just doing it now. Please be very careful. This part of the loft is full of obstructions. It houses the gears and cogwheels. Once they moved the grindstones, but then they were converted to make the statues move. Are they still the original statues? Most of them are, yes. Some of them I've had to duplicate myself. You saw an example of my studio. It was certainly very striking. And you do the finishing, too? I must do everything by myself. This way, please. There you are. You can work in here. This is a very peaceful little room. You see, I've already made an initial selection of the more interesting and curious documents concerning the history of the castle. They are here for your perusal. Could I take them home with me? No. I can't allow it. I can be available and at your disposal while you are working so that everything that is written can be accurate and precise. I shall take a few days off from my duties at the academy. Oh, it's late. I have a lesson to give. You have three hours to work in. The last ferry leaves at seven. Don't miss it, please. Don't worry about me. Ah, yes. Remember, you must finish within five days. All right? Hmm? Pleasant time, Hans. Annie Laurie. Annie Laurie. Annie Laurie. <laughs> Why do you have to bother her, too? I haven't been able to get a clean line drawn all day. You're nervous, my dear Lizalotka. You're in such a temper whenever you expect Hans. Huh. What a clown you are, Ralph. You're obviously dreaming. What's wrong with you? Oh, nothing. I guess I'm just a bit distracted. Uh, excuse me, Professor. Yes. Did a Mr. Van Arnhem come around to call on you today? Yes, why do you know him? Oh, 
We've been friends since we were children. Oh, oh, I'm glad to hear it. That young fellow seemed to be very serious. I believe he'll do very well. Students, class is over. On Tuesday, I shall not be at the academy, so we will meet on the following Friday in sculpture. Good afternoon. Four whole days on holiday. Oh, how wonderful. What are you planning to do? To go to Dodson with Hans. It's our hometown. Can't pay diem, Lotte. Pluck the occasion, because if you don't get hold of Hans now, the next time you see him, he'll have white hair. That's what I hope to do. But it would be a miracle. Oh, stop that now. We're the last ones here. Hans is waiting outside. He might go away. Come on. Shame. Give me a light for my cigar, if you please. I think I have one. I requested a light for my cigar. Oh, forgive me. I'm sorry. Very kind of you, Mr. Um... Uh, Van Einen. Hans Van Einen. Bolem. Dr. Bolem. Good evening, Mr. Van Arnim. Good evening. Excuse me, please. Un jour, mon ami, ma mère, tu n'es pas chouette. Disait nos feux chevilles, celles sont pas basses. Elles sont faites pour la danse. Olé, olé. Et si tu dois trouver, dis-moi que Molière. Voici la nouvelle danse que tout le monde aime. La danse que vous a guiché, cela m'a chiché. Ça met que dans les veines, au centenaire. Si vous voulez la prendre, vous pouvez le faire. Et ça peut me faire, je ne suis pas belle. Il y a mon gars qui est un peintre et qui m'adore. Elle va m'enturlurer comme une étoile. Qu'est-ce que ça veut me faire Je ne suis pas belle. Je vais les commencer. Je vais les commencer. Wonderful, wonderful. <rire> Be careful, Rob. Tell me, is it all yes, set? Yes, but I'm on contract with the Globe in Paris. Star ah, Billy. Ah, <laughs> that means we won't see each other anymore. No, but I'll drop your postcard every now and then. Goodbye, Rob, <laughs> darling. The best of luck to you, Annie Laurie. <laughs> What are you doing here? Me? Oh, nothing. Just standing here watching the show without pay. <laughs> what a little goose you are. I went by your house for you and you weren't there. I was beginning to worry. It's not a habit of yours to worry about me. Oh, all right. I know I'm late, but you have to thank your old professor who made me start working right away. It was he who made me late. All right, are you satisfied? Hmm. No? Then there's only one remedy. Have dinner with me. Oh, cheer up now. Come on. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, finally you two have the kindness to come and share my solitude with me. <laughs> How are you? Uh, instead of being a student, I would have done better if I had learned to be a dancer. And you, we've missed you. What have you been up to all this time? Oh, bowling a few games with Professor Val. Your order, please, sir. <laughs> How did things go today with Val? My impression was that he wanted to impose an ultimatum. I have to finish everything within a week. I have to stay at the mill from morning till evening. You know him so well. Do you know if he has a daughter? A daughter? I believe so. The mother died due to the effects of childbirth. Wait a minute, she has an unusual name. Elfie, as I remember, or something like that. Elfie, yes. What kind of woman is she? Oh, well, I wouldn't know. No one has ever seen her in town. Maybe her father will never let her out of his sight. <laughs> or maybe she's such a monster, he's ashamed to let her be seen. <laughs> I think it's strange. Very strange. And why? Because she's beautiful. Perfectly lovely. Don't you get what he really means? How do you know? Do you know her? No. But I do know you. You said it on purpose, just to make her angry. No, I was only telling the truth. But I didn't think she would be so upset. Be a good fellow, Ralph. See what you can do for me. All right, then, I get you. Hans von Arnen. Won't you sit down a while, if you like? No. I mustn't, Hans. I mustn't stay now. There are always people who are spying, eyes that are watching. Hans, I have no explanation to give you. Oh, but I have to see you, absolutely. I must, this evening. This evening? But where? Here, in the windmill. That seems imprudent. Someone might see us together. Is it so urgent? Yes, Hans. I beg you. At 11 o'clock, everyone will be asleep. Nobody will discover anything. Take this key. It opens the door to the windmill. I implore you. You must come here. I'll be waiting. I feel tired now. I want to get some rest. I'll see you to your room, if you'll permit me. Good night, dear Papa. Good night, my child. I must compliment you, Elfie. You played that excellently. I've never heard you play that way before, with so much passion. I wasn't playing it for you, Roland. I was aware of that. But don't forget that I am the only person in the whole world who knows everything about you. I am the only person you have a right to love, Elfie. Pity, Bolan. Forgive me.
Right, just then. Didn't you hear me knock? I was sleeping, Hans. Excuse me if I've awakened you, but today you said it was urgent for you to speak to me. And then I saw you lying here like this. So strange, so still. I was dreaming, Hans. I was dreaming that you were on your way to me from far off. And I was still waiting for you. I expected you to be... I don't know. Someone dear to me. And finally there you were. Moving closer. And all I wanted to do was go on dreaming. I wanted... the dream to continue. I never wanted to end now, Hans. That was a dangerous dream you had. You never know how it might end. Why do you want it to? Don't I please you? You do please me, Elfie. But afterwards... Afterwards doesn't matter. I'm here and I want you. I'm here for you. Don't you see? Take me in your arms. <laughs> Some friends of yours waiting downstairs at the entrance of the carousel. Who? Don't know. A young gentleman and a young lady. I'm coming. mind if I show more interest in the statuary. <laughs> recently. Because only recently I realized what love means. Your love.
But I don't believe I'm worthy of you. Why not? I'm ashamed to tell you the reason. Don't tell me. Could you forgive me? For everything? Oh, yes, I... I love you. There's the poisoner of Poitiers. Dear Miss Lisa Lata, what is the matter with you? What happened to her? I really don't know. I can't understand. I have something here for her. Let her sniff these. It's nothing. Only a minor fainting fit. It's a common occurrence here. How are you feeling, Lotta? Oh. oh, better, thank you. Please, Hans, let's not stay here any longer. I think it best you go. Oh, wait a minute, if you please. Just one moment. What have you done here? Oh, <laughs> you must have stuck yourself with the point of one of your hat pins. Here we are. Nothing to worry about. It's no more than a tiny little scratch. There. Come, my dear. Let me help you. That's the girl. <laughs> Do forgive me. I'm really embarrassed at having made such a disturbance. Oh, no, no. Not at all. No, think nothing of it. Just stay well. I want to see you in class next Friday, my dear. Thank you. If you please, Hans. Before you go to your studio, would you drop in on me? Of course, Professor. Excuse me, you two, if I don't come along with you, but I have to return to my work. Now I'm in a hurry to finish it up. We have to take that trip to Dartson, don't we? Yes. So long, Rob. And thanks for everything. So long. <laughs> My compliments to you. He's in your clutches again, huh? Of course he is. <laughs> May I come in? Uh, please come in. You will probably think it strange that I wish to discuss a subject that would seem to belong in my own family. But you'll soon understand. 
I have a young and only daughter, Elfie. Almost an invalid. With our mother's fatal illness. Science can do nothing to cure her. We just try and keep her alive. And that is why Dr. Bolam lives here. He is always ready in an extreme emergency. He can detect symptoms, preventing her going into a crisis. And does she realize how ill she is? Uh, unfortunately, she doesn't accept it. She doesn't see why she can't lead a normal life like other girls. The slightest emotional upset, the slightest disturbance must be avoided. Her life depends on it. You seem a trustworthy man. And I hope by now you understand why I wish to speak so frankly. It's an entreaty. And also, a final warning. One crisis could kill her. You can count on me. I knew I could, Hans. Please? I mustn't delay you. you, Hans. I felt that something would bring you back to me. Are you sure it wasn't the note you wrote me, Elfie? Forgive me. I was desperate. I don't know. I felt something like a presentiment that you never wanted to see me again. That you didn't ever want to come back to me. I should have delivered your letter straight to your father. But it seemed an ungrateful thing to do to you. And especially cruel to anyone who's entrusted me with a confidence, even if I have abused it. You repudiate me and my love for you because of absurd scruples like these. Not just because of that. We both have made a great mistake, Elfie. It was madness on our part, and we mustn't do the same again. But I'm in love with you, Hans. I love no one but you. Oh, even if there were others before who were able to take advantage of my solitude here and also of my inexperience. But perhaps that's why you cannot forgive me. Is that what's taking you away from me? It's unfair of you. If you knew what a horrible life I have to lead. Lonely. Shut inside these walls all the time. I understand you, Elfie, and I have no right to reprove you for anything. But I cannot deceive you. I'm just not capable of it. I don't love you, Elfie. And what does that matter? As long as you let me love you. As long as I can always be at your side. Please take me away. Far away from here. I would go with you wherever you like. I beg you not to talk this way. You know how impossible it is. You must remain here. We leave each other now. Break off right away. Forget everything. Hans. You can't keep it from me now. You're in love with that girl, aren't you? Yes, I know you are. I saw you. But no one on earth will ever take you away from me. I wouldn't even stop it killing you. Stop it, Elfie. Stop this play acting. You're insane, unbalanced. Yes. Yes. It's because I want you to be my own. My own.
Excuse me for not answering the door sooner. I was doing my morning chores. What is it you wish? What is it that you wish? I wish to speak at once with Professor Val. It's extremely urgent. Well, to tell you the truth, he hasn't rung for me yet. I realize it's not the right moment, but it's absolutely necessary for me to see him. I'm very sorry, sir, but I can't disturb him when it's not even seven yet. He should ring the bell for me before very long, if you'd like to wait a little while. What is it? What do you want? I didn't realize you were already in here. I was only going to dust and straighten up the room. Uh, just a minute. Selma. What is it, sir? Come in. Can you tell me if there's been anybody else in this room since yesterday evening? Nobody comes in here ever. And this rose, did you put it here? I don't have time to gather flowers, sir, I assure you. May I come in? Selma, outside. Yes, Doctor. 
Professor Aval would like to have a word with you. Yes, I'm coming. But what's the matter? Are you feeling ill? No, it's nothing. You don't look as though you're feeling very well. You must have a fever. You've hurt yourself here. Leave me alone. It's nothing, I tell you, Doctor. Oh. You shouldn't speak to him in this condition, whatever the reason for it may be, which must be very serious, judging from your appearance. Please excuse me. I'm so terribly upset. I understand. Let me just see now. What do I have here to give you? Oh, of course, I'll give you a sedative. It will put you back in shape. Here you are. Two of these tablets will soon calm your nervousness. There, drink it down. Now I'm sure you'll be feeling better. Murderer. You're nothing but a coward and a murderer. No. You have to believe me. That's the reason I'm here. I simply had to speak to you, to confess the whole truth to you. Merely words, miserable excuses. In the most deplorable manner, you have taken unfair advantage of my hospitality. I opened my heart to you as a father. I made you understand how terrible the illness was that threatened the life of my Elfie, and now you are responsible for her death. You killed her. You murdered her! No! It's the truth, the truth, I tell you! I don't want to hear about it, deliberately or by chance. No one now can give me back my daughter. Elfie is dead. Elfie is resting peacefully in the cemetery. She is resting. Never shall she be disturbed. No one must ever hear of this. I mean, no one. Elfie is in her grave, in the cemetery of Vese. Let her slumber in her tomb. In peace. In peace. In peace. A blood stain. Here. A blood stain? From what? From what? Why should you have bled?
It's just not possible. It was here. Open up! Open up this door! Mr. Van Arnim. What are you doing here at this time of the night? What are you up to? I want to know what's going on in this house. Where's Professor Val? I must speak to him right now. Calm yourself, young man. What's the matter with you? Who's that girl in there? A girl, you see? Don't lie. I saw her in there, tied to a chair. In there? Young man, you are quite mistaken. However, one moment. There. See for yourself if it will set your mind at rest. Where is Professor Val? I want to talk to him. Where is he? But you must be insane. Try to calm down now. Get out of my way. Professor Val! Professor Val! Professor Val! Professor Val! Open the door! Open the door! Who's there? Professor Val! Professor Val! Wait. Get hold of yourself! Rudolph! Let him alone. What's the matter with you? Professor, I have to talk to you. Some more light. At this hour of the night? Why, it's one o'clock. I've already tried to reason with him, but he's apparently lost all control of himself. Yes, you're right, but with the impossible things going on, you owe me an explanation. Mr. Mr. Van Arnhem, I hope you understand it is to me you owe an explanation. Professor, today I made your confession. You made me swear that I would never again speak of Elfie or of what happened to her. Elfie? Whatever are you saying? Who spoke to you of my daughter? And what is supposed to have happened to her? But can it be possible that you don't remember? Or is it that you don't want to? I begin to comprehend. You want to make me feel remorse as if I committed a crime. No. No! I'm not a criminal, and I won't accept the guilt! But you have completely taken leave of your senses. Crime and remorse. Why, these are the ravings of a madman. Hallucination, a typical case of mental instability. Uh, no. You are trying to make me believe that Elfie is still alive. That bracelet. Yes, her bracelet. It was there on your work table. And then... Then it was on Elfie's wrist, inside her tomb. Uh, Elfie? Elfie inside our tomb? What tomb do you mean? In the cemetery of Vesa, where you yourself, Professor, told me she'd been buried. And she's there. And inside her tomb. Dead. Dead! Not alive! What's wrong, Papa? Hans. No. No! Hans. But what are all of you doing here? And why are you shouting? Oh, it's nothing serious. Never mind, Elfie. We were just talking. Go back to your room, dear. Bolum, see her to her room.
Rodolph. Young man, I'm not a physician. However, I realize nonetheless that your present state of mental disturbance endangers the tranquility of my house, as well as Elfie. What are your orders, Professor? Get the carriage ready to take Mr. Von Harnum back into town right away. Yes, sir. And now, come with me. There are many things that you must explain. You're telling an absurd story. You lied to me, Bolin. Hans is not unbalanced. He came here to see me and you prevented him. Don't cling to illusions, Elfie. You must forget about him. Never. Never. Hans for me is life itself. No, Hans for you is certain death. I alone can give you life and safety. Your life is bound to mine forever. To a creature like yourself, don't be a fool. I wonder what your Hans would say if he were ever to know what you really are. You'll never tell him, Bolem. You're too much of a coward to risk your life that way. Now leave me alone. Excuse me, the carriage is ready, Professor Hall. Very well. Oh. After all that you have told me, you will realize that your presence in this house has become an absolute impossibility. You will even have to forget that you have ever been here. Forget it all now, if you don't want to be considered bad. If you please. Farewell, Mr. Van Arnhem. I sincerely trust you recover soon. Lauren, we've succeeded. I knew I was not mistaken. I must confess that all of your stratagems were brought off to perfection. And that drug you administered to him completely cancelled every dividing line between reality and an hallucination. He'll never be able to tell what really happened to him here if he doesn't want to run the risk of being declared hopelessly insane. That may be, but I still believe the other solution would have been preferable. Ah, it would have been far too dangerous to kill him when everybody knew he was working here. Hans will be a danger to you as long as he lives. Your daughter is in love with him. She'll stop at nothing to see him again. Eventually, she will forget all about him because Hans will never be around here again. He's undergone an experience here that would unsettle the soundest mind. Unfortunately, there was a fact that is hard to cancel, even in his unsettled mind. Which is? He's seen Elfie die. As so? He held her in his arms, her inert and lifeless body. For Hans, that was also an hallucination. He has the slightest evidence, not a single concrete proof that would conduct him back to reality. I can only hope that you are right. But the mere thought that he might be able to see your daughter again makes me tremble. He might question her, investigate. Discover that Elfie has been dying and reliving for years. You might understand how it is that we restore her to life. And then there could be no escape for us or for her. In that case, I should be forced to kill him. <coughs> Elfie. Another attack. Quickly, Bolin. <laughs> save you, Elfie. I will save you once again, don't fear. Get everything ready here. I'll see to the rest myself.
something to help me. Help me to get away. Yes, Annie Laurie, be calm. Just a little longer. Be calm and relax. You'll not suffer now any longer. Just relax and wait. Everything is ready, Professor. Good. Give me the needle quickly. Dear Alfie, your sick blood is going away. It's draining away. Just a few seconds longer. Yes, Professor. Tell me, how is he feeling now, Doctor? Medically speaking, he's cured. The rest he's had has done him good. These few days were all ever needed to bring him round. I was afraid he was going to lose his mind. Well, it was a severe case of nervous exhaustion, that's true. A nervous breakdown? That's strange. One day you're all right, and then all of a sudden... Yes, an oddly acute form of it. Quite unexpected. But what do you suppose happened to him? Ah, that. I really don't know. It should be easier for you, his friends, to know this than it is for me. Is there anything more we can do for him? Oh, nothing in particular. Entertainment. Keep him amused. That shouldn't be too difficult, I'd say, for you. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Please don't mention it. Here you it. are. If you'll permit me, I'll accompany Thank your you. carriage. Thank you. Good morning. Well, what's the verdict? Am I given up for lost, or is there still a bit of hope for me? Bad news for you, Hans. You're well now. And now you can get out of bed and go out and escape from me. <laughs> Thinking 
thinking of yourself, aren't you? You must have enjoyed being a nurse to me. Finding me here all the time, well behaved, completely defenseless. Yes, I enjoyed it. I admit it. You know, I really liked hearing you call for me every minute. You kept saying, Please, Lotta, I feel so lost without you. Lotta, don't leave me. Lotta, hold my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I really must have been in a bad way then. Oh, you can have your jokes with me as much as you please. I don't believe a word you say. Oh, no? And why not? Because when you were delirious, you gave yourself completely away. And now I know that you love me. You know all this. And do you also know when I can get out of bed? Oh, in two, three days, if you like. That's too long to wait. Hans, what are you doing? No, no, it's too long to wait. I have some important business to be taken care of by tomorrow. I want to make a little trip to Dartson and respectfully ask the parents of a certain young lady if they will consent to have her marry a poor fellow like me. Huh? You mean... <laughs> I think that you could help me at least this once. I've refused to do so for three years, and I refuse to do it now. Whatever you may think of me, I'm still a doctor, not a sadistic mummifier of women. <laughs> Stray scruples indeed from a doctor expelled from the medical profession for malpractice. For the miserable ex-convict you most surely are. Aren't you forgetting that my statues are your salvation as well as mine? I'm not forgetting it, Val. But I was never willing to help you put dead bodies on display. My only duty here is to save your daughter's life. I might even say that my desire to do so comes from my love of science, but that wouldn't be the exact truth. Your reasons are of no interest to me whatever, Vernon. As long as you take care of Elfie, keep that in mind. This is the truth of the matter. I know it, Val. Professor Val. What do you want? While you've been playing with death here, I've triumphed over it. As you are well aware, I've already isolated a certain serum, able to prolong indefinitely the life of red corpuscle. But that wasn't enough. It was necessary for us to find the exact type of blood that would correspond with your daughter's own, a blood type extremely hard to find. Well then, now I've found it. Uh -huh. Your daughter will be able to live now, like a normal girl. Whose blood is it? Lisa Lotta Kornheim. Hmm. Oh, 52 steps 
up here. We could just as well wait it downstairs. Give her a whistle. Lisa Lotta. Ah, I bet she's still asleep. Lisa Lotta. Who is it? Who are you looking for? Ah, it's you, Mr. Hunt. I suppose you were looking for Miss Lisa Lotta. Yes. Miss Lisa Lotta has not returned to her rooms yet. How can that be? Mm. We had an appointment here. You may have had one. Why? What do you mean? Well, I... I don't know if I'm doing right. Go on. Please tell us. Miss Lisa Lotte hasn't been back here since last night. And didn't she say... Didn't she leave any message for me? Well, really. If she had left word, I would surely have given it to you immediately. Maybe there's a note inside her room. Well, if you want to see for yourselves, I'll unlock the door. I wonder why she left her pocketbook here. Well, what of it? She could have taken another with her. No. She wouldn't have gone out without her papers and her money. It's very strange. Oh, there must be a thousand explanations for it. Well, what's the matter? This girl here. Well? She's a redhead. Yes, she has red hair. What of it? It's she. There's no doubt that it was she I saw. What do you mean? You must have seen her, of course, in the beer garden with us. No, I never saw her before that night. How is it possible? How is it possible for everything to have been just an hallucination? Why does that nightmare still haunt me? Hans, listen to me. While you were sick, I asked you several questions. You didn't want to answer any of them, and I didn't insist on it. But now the situation has all changed. That girl you recognized with red hair is Annie Laurie. She's a model. You say that you saw her on a certain night. Where was she? I saw her in a cellar, tied to a chair. Where was it? In an underground room of the mill. Just a minute. Let's go over this again. Annie Laurie told me she was about to leave for Paris. She was supposed to come and pose, but she never did. Now, if you had really never laid eyes on Annie Laurie before, you couldn't have known who she was from a photograph, and especially know for sure that she has red hair. Therefore, it couldn't have been just an hallucination. You must have really seen her in that underground room. But then... It was all real. All of what? Now you have to tell me, Hans. You must tell me everything. What happened to you? Come on now. Blood hasn't undergone the slightest alteration. The red corpuscle count has remained constant. We can perform the operation on Elfie this very night. I'm certain of all this. Are you sure there's no risk for Elfie? No risk whatever. In that case, I will agree that we go ahead without delay. We'll have to clear all of this out of the way. Please help. Will you tell Rudolph that this statue will have to be set up in the carousel tonight without fail? He must do it promptly. Very well. To me, 
it's an infernal puzzle. Hans, in all this story you've just told me, there are some things that are absurd, and others that are certainly true, like Annie Laurie. And how do you explain her being down there, in that awful cellar? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. There are too many things I can't account for yet. If we could only find a clue, an indication, one proven fact, just to demonstrate that your story is really true. Of course. The cemetery. The cemetery of Vese. under the bed. And you? Weren't you afraid to? No. Because you were never all alone like me. In this house, bleak and dark as it is. Maybe then you already knew Hans. You nestled close to him when it thundered, didn't you? It must have been very exciting. Wonderfully exciting. To tremble as he embraced you. But now all that is going to change, Lisa Lotte. Now Hans is going to love me. Because you won't be here anymore. Because your life will belong to me. Here, in this serum, is your daughter's life. Three years of lengthy and continual experimenting, Val. One minute after Elsie's blood is drained off, the serum will be introduced into this chamber where it will be mixed with the new blood in regulated quantities. Without this serum, the red corpuscles would not have the strength to survive, and since the body would be unable to generate new ones, they would die, slowly but surely. They would be destroyed, as if by cancer. It will only be necessary to put your daughter under a light anesthetic. The fluid could provoke a painful reaction. The rest of the operation will proceed exactly as all the others. There is no risk at all. My congratulations, Olam. You've thought of everything, almost everything. Hans, let's not do anything foolish. It doesn't matter if Lise Lott is in danger. Now, go down in the basement. We'll need a lantern. Over there, by the front door.
mummified. It looks like Annie Laurie. Lieselotte! The trap door is under here. How do we get to it? We've got to move this quickly. Push harder! Everything is ready, Professor. Good. Let's proceed. Just one moment, Professor Val. What do you want? This will be the very last operation because Elfie will no longer require my service as a physician. True. That's so? You know very well how long I've been struggling to keep her alive. I've committed atrocious crimes for her. And now I'm giving her a completely new life. And your point? I have the right to claim a fair compensation. I've never haggled over money. It's not money I want. What is it then? I want your daughter, Val. Do you know what you're asking, Doctor? Yes. I love Elfie. I've loved her for years. And it's due to my efforts alone that she is still alive. Elfie must be my wife. Your wife? <laughs> Doctor. How could you possibly presume that I would ever entrust Elfie to such as you? You are a loathsome criminal and a complete outcast. And if it were for me, you would still be rotting in prison. Don't forget that. I'm not forgetting anything. But now I'm the one who has the upper hand. This is the first time in my life I've ever wanted anything. And now I'm going to have it. Don't delude yourself. Not only will you never have my daughter, but I will not permit Elfie to owe her life to the horrible character that I know you to be, Bolum. I have used you as I would any tool. It's over. I don't need you any longer. Bolum, your fate is sealed. The only one my daughter will see when she awakens will be me. Only me. Ah, me! Ah. Killing me. You have murdered your own daughter. Ah. It's no use. There's, there's another way in to our studio. Well, well forever. I will restore you. I and nobody else. It's here, Rob.
job, quickly. Lisa Lawson, she's alive. Get her untied. Hurry. Elfie. Elfie. Yet another mad scientist perishes in flames. Do you find it amazing how many actually go that way? Well, that concludes another week of some of the finest cinema offered on this very platform. Join us again next week for yet another fine double feature. Cheers. <laughs>